Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. This is my second video today and I'm making it because I had two cameras to review today so I suppose that's as good a reason as any. Uh, the subject of my second video is another Minolta rangefinder camera. Uh, this particular one is the Minolta Unimat. Uh, this Unimat is the number two version which dates from around 1962 or 1963. Uh, there were three versions of these cameras made. Uh, this was the most popular and I guess uh, the most reliable version of the three which were produced. For those of you who are new to my channel, uh, I sell vintage Japanese cameras at my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I also have an Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera, and I have an eBay store as well. So if you're interested in buying this camera or another vintage Japanese camera, uh, please check out my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So as I said, the Unimat camera, this Unimat uh, is the number two version, which was introduced in around 1962. And uh, this camera was designed for, to, I guess, to give people uh, uh, a more automatic or easier to use camera compared to the other cameras uh, Minolta was manufacturing at the time, namely the Hi-Matic series. Uh, the Unimat is quite a unique and interesting camera and quite different from a lot of the other cameras uh, which are on the market at the time. Uh, it features a kind of, uh, I guess, semi-automatic operating system, not fully automatic like uh, uh, some other cameras of the era, but uh, yeah, a semi-automatic system which is very similar to the Minoltina uh, P and S cameras. And I, re I reviewed the Minoltina S sometime in the past. And uh, if you can operate the Minoltina S, you can operate the you know, Unimat. I, I kind of think of the Unimat as being a full-frame uh, Minoltina. And it has the identical light meter system that came in the old Minoltina cameras, which you know, coincidentally were produced at the same time. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features and functions and controls of the Unimat camera, starting at the top. And here we have the film rewind knob, and this is the same one which you find on the uh, Hymatic series. You have a shoe for mounting a flash gun and that attaches to a sync socket located on the bottom. You'll have to use a uh, PC sync cord to use a flash with this one. And uh, we have a match needle uh, light meter system, and the way it operates is when you take a light reading, the orange me ne uh, meter needle will move somewhere in the range here, and to set the camera to uh, match uh, the exposure, you have to turn this dial in the rear, and this causes this kind of green pointer to move back and forth. And you can see it moving as I'm turning. Uh, when it lines up with uh, both parts of this fork on either side of the needle, then uh, you have the proper setting to take your photograph. It's kind of a shutter priority system because if you, as you turn this dial, the shutter speed changes, but uh, there's no control for the aperture. The camera will choose the aperture uh, itself. So. Uh, kind of similar to the shutter priority system in the uh, Canon cameras, but uh, a, different, uh, a different take on it. So uh, let's go ahead and continue. Uh, to the right here we have the shutter release button, uh, which accepts a standard cable release. And here we have the film counter uh, window. We have the viewfinder window located on the back here, and here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever, which is surprisingly smooth and easy to operate. And uh, the shutter itself is quite, uh, quite uh, quiet, uh, uh, quieter than actually on a Leica M rangefinder camera. And on the back here we have kind of a guide which uh, you use for operating a flash. Uh, due to, I guess, the limited film speeds and lens options and such available in the early 1960s, it was quite popular to use a flash with a lot of cameras. And that was pretty much the only way you could get an exposure uh, in many indoor situations and things like that. So uh, often when I buy these cameras, they come with a flash included with them, but uh, uh, yeah, they require, most of them are old, the old bulb flashes and things, so uh, I generally just put those in the recycle bin. Moving to the bottom of the camera, we have a cutout here, which it makes it easier to put in your film cartridge. We have a quarter inch tripod socket, and we have a release button to release the winding mechanism so you can rewind the film. 
Uh, on the front here, we have kind of the important controls. We have an access cover here, which you can remove. I believe this is to adjust the, uh, not the viewfinder or anything, but to adjust the light meter. Uh, this has a selenium light meter, which does not require a battery. And selenium light meters can uh, deteriorate over age. Uh, this is usually due to uh, uh, corrosion on the selenium surface. Uh, cameras which are stored in a good dry environment tend to last longer than ones which are stored in poor environments. And I've taken apart these meters before and it, it looks like a kind of a coated metal, plated metal, like, I don't know, like uh, galvanized or something like that. And this gets corroded over time and when it reaches a certain point, the light meter doesn't work anymore. Uh, fortunately, the light meter still seems to work quite well in this one. And like quality light meters, which they used to produce handheld light meters, there's kind of an adjustment which you can use to fine tune it. So that, that's quite handy to have and something that you don't find on a lot of these old cameras. On the lens assembly, as this is a fixed lens kind of camera, all the important controls here are here because the aperture and shutter and all that stuff is all built into this one unit. Uh, at the very back here, we have a dial for adjusting the shutter speed, as I mentioned earlier, and it's also the dial which moves the indicator back and forth here in the uh, in the meter window. But this is also how you adjust for the film speed. So if I'm putting, uh, say, 400 speed film in the camera, I will go ahead and I will pull up on the dial like so, and I'll turn it until this line lines up with, say, the number 400, and then let it back down, and the camera is set to operate with 400 speed film. Over here we have a selector switch for uh, switching it over to the flash sync speed. Um, I'm not sure what that is here. I think it's something like a 1 30th second or something like that. That's kind of normal for these. And up here we have the switch for switching between normal shooting and the self timer. Uh, as always, I recommend not using the self timer on these cameras because uh, it's kind of weak and prone to failure. In the front of that we have the focusing ring and there's a focusing scale on the very front of the camera. Um, yeah, this is actually a rangefinder camera, so uh, and it's kind of a kind of odd design for the rangefinder because you have the big window here, and then the rangefinder window is located kind of usually on the opposite side from where you find it. Normally, find it. Normally, you have the viewfinder window here, and maybe a bright line mask here, and then the rangefinder window is located on this side. But the design of this camera required a different arrangement, so it's kind of backwards compared to other cameras, uh, but it still works quite well. And also, uh, there is an advantage to this design, and that is that it puts the viewfinder window closer to the lens, so you don't have to move the camera as much when adjusting for parallax or such like that. And this camera doesn't have a parallax uh, adjustment in the viewfinder, but uh, it's not as necessary in this design as it would be in more conventional rangefinder cameras. And of course, over here we have the Fresnel glass, which covers the uh, a viewfinder. The lens in this camera is a 45mm f2.8 Rokor lens, which is quite a high quality lens and which uh, Minolta used in a large variety of cameras. And uh, you can always tell a good lens when, it, when it's used for a number of years. Uh, if, whenever they come across, when, when they produce a poor quality lens, Japan was pretty good, or Japanese companies were quite good about quickly ending the production of that lens and replacing it with something better. Any lens which has a production run of more than three or four years is a, is a really good quality lens. Uh, loading the film in the camera is quite easy and very similar to the camera which I just described except that the release is located on the top here instead of the bottom. So simply pop it up like so. And uh, you'll have to insert the film canister from the bottom through this cutout here rather than dropping it in. Uh, once again, pull the film over uh, the lens chamber here, uh, all the way across, and feed it into the take-up spool. Uh, in this case, the take-up spool turns to the right, so once you have the end of the film meter loaded in, I kind of put it in so it faces down toward that way, so it has kind of a good kink in it when I turn it that way. It grips and it won't pull out. And I simply keep turning this knob, uh, knob here, dial knob, until uh, the film pulls all the way across, and the uh, teeth on this spool are lined up with the holes on the film on the top and bottom. And once that is like that, I'll go ahead and close the film door and then I will 
wind and fire the shutter until the number one shows up in the film counter window. And that's all there it is, and it's ready to go. Uh, what you'll do next after loading the film is, of course, set the film speed, and then you will uh, point the camera at your subject, and you will adjust uh, this dial until the green pointer lines up with the light meter needle, and then simply focus, compose, and shoot, and you're good to go. Anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Minolta Unimat 2 rangefinder camera from 1963. Uh, I plan to be making more videos uh, in the near future. I've come across a whole bunch of cameras, different ones, which I haven't reviewed before, and I, I want to make videos about all of them, so if you'd like to see these videos, please subscribe. And if you like the video, uh, please click the thumbs up button. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.